Good morning, everyone. It's Cassie. I'm having an awesome day. Welcome to Frostpunk 2. Let me turn the music down. I played the first Frostpunk. It is challenging. It's a tough game and it's a lot of fun. They have put out some DLC for it over the years. That's also been super fun. Gives you new challenges to a pretty standard base builder survival game. Um, but I've been looking forward to Frostpunk 2 for a really long time. And it was originally supposed to come out in May, I think, May or June. And then it got pushed all the way back to today, September 20th. So here we are, finally get to play this. We're gonna play story mode. I'm probably gonna lose a lot so be gentle with me while I try to figure it out. I feel like music is still way too loud. Turn it down a little bit more. And we'll jump in. Welcome to Frostpunk 2. Frostpunk 2 is a challenging game in which planning ahead is crucial and failure, failure is a natural part of the experience. If you're a veteran of the original Frostpunk, I am kind of, or enjoy a challenge, you may try our luck with Try your luck with the officer or higher difficulty level. Otherwise, we suggest you start at citizen and take it one step at a time. Remember, it's not about how many times we fall. It's about how many times we get up. I remember when the first Frostpunk came out, it was so hard that like everyone was kind of railing against it. It got a lot of criticism for being as challenging as it was. The Legacy of New London, Prologue. They came upon the old machine as they always do, and when the whiteout hits, they must survive. The Wanderers. In 1887, the world froze to death. Civilization crumbled. The failing British Empire built generators to support cities of evacuees, cities that would become the last on Earth. Whether huddled by a generator or out in open frostland, those that survived were shaped by the ordeal. Thirty years later, all became very different people. Citizen is... looks like easy mode. Moderate challenge, but with a margin for error and room to correct mistakes. A challenging endeavor, still with margin for error, but otherwise demanding focus and planning. I'm kind of... Um, let's start with Citizen, and if it's too easy, we can always back out and move it up to Officer. The game suggested Officer if you've played the first game a bunch, and I have. Um, I don't recall exactly how many hours played. I could probably find out real quick. One hundred twelve. Not as much as some games, but I mean, it's a it's a hard game. So I will start at Citizen, and like I said, if it's too easy, we'll bump it up. Stuart. 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 He is a little creepy. This game was tagged Psychological Horror, which is a tag that I uh, I block on Steam. I don't like to be scared, but I wouldn't say that this necessarily counts as a horror game by any stretch of the imagination, except for seeing her face. She's a little spooky. Captain. Captain. Can you hear us? Captain. Captain. Captain! Do you hear us? A generation ago. We fled the crumbling British Empire as the world surround us. I held New London together. United. We survived 30 years of White House. But the world around us is dead. dead. Empty. Right. The city grows, Merely surviving is not enough. 
We have to expand. After all, it's us who survive the end of the world. Yes. Yeah. Really did the most to make that a little bit scary. I the, the game isn't scary. It's base builder. We've been roaming the frozen desert for years. Many of us do not remember a world before the great frost. Now another whiteout is coming and again we've reached the old machine. Again we will rely on its furnace to provide heat through the storm. In the past we always made sure there were enough supplies for the next whiteout, but our numbers have grown throughout the years. Providing for everyone must is getting harder and harder. We must survive. Fight the cold. The old dreadnought remains in pieces under layers of snow, but the scattered wagons still have resources inside. First, we must break ice to reach one of the oil wagons and construct an extraction district to use it. Then we can turn on the dreadnought's surface or furnace to heat us. We will restart the furnace. So we have to dig the furnace out. Frost break the area. Initially, you can build, you can only build districts in a limited area. The wider terrain, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to read all this to you. Oh, I have to click and drag. Okay. Frost break to an oil wagon to end construct an extraction district. Turn on the furnace in the dreadnought wreck to provide heat. An oil wagon, you say? Oh, here, okay, gotcha. I think that counts. Frost breaking is new. It wasn't a mechanic in the first game. And construct an extraction district. I keep losing my cursor.
there. Can I already turn on the furnace? No. We have 82 weeks until the whiteout, and we are puttering. Okay. So now, with that uncovered, I should, in theory, be able to create an extraction district. Districts are also a new mechanic over the first game. There was, there were rings around the generator. And you could put whatever buildings you liked into the rings and you could do it strategically such that houses were closest to the generator and they were the warmest. Or certain buildings needed to be warmer than other buildings. Med centers needed to be warmer uh, so that people could survive in them and get well. Time is moving fast. It's 79 weeks to the whiteout already. Okay, it's one, two, three to speed up. Oil. As the thick black liquid oozes through the pipes, our people rejoice. The carcass of this old machine is a testament to the hardships that made us, but more importantly, it's our haven in the storm. It has allowed us to weather many whiteouts, and it will do so again. We have oil. We can turn on the furnace. Select the dreadnought wreck to access furnace control. Once turned on, the dreadnought's heat will automatically con the dreadnought's furnace will automatically convert oil into heat. The furnace is on, we have enough oil to cover current needs, but the cold will still affect our people until they have proper shelter. Housing will best protect us from the cold if built in close proximity to other housing or to the furnace itself. However, we need prefabricated parts for construction. We brought some with us, the rest we'll need to extract from the wagon wreckages. Okay. Frostbreak, frostbreak to a construction wagon. Down here. That'll do. Build two housing districts. Place the housing districts next to each other or the furnace to reduce heat demand. Cold is notable. Disease minor. Hunger minor and growing. Squalor is absent and growing. Extremely increased by materials scarcity. Well, we're working on that. Two registered as sick. We're already on week 14. Oof. Okay, let's build a couple housing districts. I do want to build them next to each other. So I do... Should I be frostbreaking more?
We have 3,000 people. 1,300 of them are working. Two of them are sick. Yes. Or 1,300 of them are workable. In the first game, you could decide whether children work or go to, like, daycare. Basically, and if you put them to work, morale would dip.
Gain access to food. We've established some heat and shelter for our people. We must now turn our attention to the incoming whiteout. First, we must frost break to the small patches of fertile soil suitable for growing food. Then we must store it in easily accessible depots. We must move quickly so no one starves. I see. Okay, so I didn't realize I had my microphone muted and I was kind of talking you through what I was doing. I was putting as many people to work as I could, frost breaking as much area as possible. And we have been working toward fertile soil down here. So once the frost breaking is done to that, and it seems like it might already be, we can set up... Oh, I kind of want to... Oops. Silly. We can set up a food district on top of that fertile soil. So I guessed that before the game walked me through it, but here we are. And I'm also putting a second extraction zone on this oil tanker or whatever it was called. Sorry to have my microphone muted. I'm sorry if you were very confused by the fact that I was doing without saying. I was also wondering aloud how one gets hospitals because we used to have buildings that we could place, like I said before, and they and upgrade, and it doesn't seem like we have them. Did something pop? No. So I'm frost breaking as much as I can. Keeping as much of my staff working as I can. Seems like I can't frost break anything else right now. requires 124 more workforce and that's fine because we've got a lot going on hunger hunger is notable extremely increased by food scarcity which is what we're working on here disease is minor and stable significantly increased by hunger and squalor cold is absent and stable that's good and squalor is minor but growing, extremely increased by material scarcity. Huh. Okay, we just got back a bunch of our staff, so we can resume frost breaking. I'm making my way around. We have a couple maintenance trucks. We have a few more soil plots. That's more oil. That's good. Construction. Great. Prepare for the whiteout. We secured our immediate survival. Now we have to stockpile as much food as we can before the whiteout forces us to take shelter. To do that, we need to produce more food than our current demand. We must be ready. So, oh, stockpile 40,000 food. Oof and ouch. I wonder why I can't make my way this way. Is it because I don't have these yet? I can be patient. I can't be patient. Okay, output is 45. Demand is... Oh. 
Okay. All right. So I'll keep making my way to more of the fertile soil patches. There's a noise that keeps playing in my headphones that reminds me of in the first game, you'd get like a world event where one of your citizens would want something. So I keep thinking a world event is coming up and I'm going to miss it and morale's going to drop. But I also don't see morale as a... What? Oh, that. See that? We've been here so many times, the soil is depleting. A couple more and there'll be no point in erecting uh, the hothouses. There'll be nothing to grow food on. And the yield is so low. Either we pull emergency shifts or tighten our belts. Otherwise, there may not be enough for everyone. We might not be able to fill food stockpiles without exceptional measures. Consider asking the wanderers to tighten belts or instill emergency shifts in food districts. The wanderers will ration their food and save more for the whiteout, intentionally going hungry so there's more for later. Hunger is significantly increased. Food demand per capita is decreased. Hmm. They hate emergency shifts. At least in the first game, they really hated emergency shifts. So, tighten belts, please. If your trust runs out and you become despised, the populace will want to dispo depose you, which could be your end. Noted. That was the same, too. Um, you could be exiled, and they'd throw you out into the wilds, and you'd probably freeze to death. Yeah. Okay, let's make more... Did we land on some fertile soil already, or are we busting it out now? Hmm. 26 people, sick people have returned to work in the old dreadnought. Cool. We've stockpiled 52 of 40,000 food. Yikes. I haven't unlocked that zone yet. Okay. Working on it. Oops. I'll get used to these controls eventually, right? season. Heat demand has increased. Oof. Thankfully, we've got two... What does this want? 
Oh, it's nearly depleted already? Yikes. Seven weeks of prefabs remaining. Yes, hello. My knees ache and my fingers are so stiff I can't hold the needle anymore. I've lived a full life. It warms my heart to see little Betty and Jacob playing by the evening fire, but maybe this is it. I've talked with the other elders. If it comes to it, we will go. I won't let my grandchildren starve. Some people are ready to sacrifice themselves to lower the food required. I'm not interested in that. Thank you. Okay. Each day the wind grows fiercer. Relentlessly it beats against our buildings, weakening our structures gust by gust. Without raw materials to repair the damage, our districts will deteriorate. The more we build, the more materials we will need. This is the world we know. Provide more materials to reduce squalor before it harms our people. Promise to gather more. Relations marginally improve, or don't address this right now. Relationship, relations slightly worsen. We'll do more. I'm making my way toward more stuff. Where's my cursor? Okay. So I kind of want to wrap around here a little bit. And this way to Okay, should be a little bit better on food now. I don't know that we're going to get to 40,000 food in 40 weeks, but, you know, I'm doing my very best. Okay, we've opened up a maintenance wagon with frost breaking and... Maybe two maintenance wagons. We can make a couple more food districts. There. There's more oil we might need. What's this construction we will need? Let's make our way over there. And let's put in some districts where we can. I gotta wait. This one really wants me to know it's almost empty. Oh. Seals. I can't believe my eyes. We haven't seen them since before the Great Frost. How did they survive? There's enough meat to feed everybody. We're saved. But should we slay them if the Lord spared them from the end of the world too? The seal colony can supplement our food production. How do I make this decision? I assume I have to make my way here with... How do... Do I make this decision? I don't see anything in here about seals. And I don't see... Oh, yes, I do. Yes, 
Okay, I gotta make my way down here. I've made my way over here. Let's open up. I can't open up that one yet because I'm working on it now. Let's set up some district districts where I can. Okay. Right now we can set up a couple maintenance wagons. What are maintenance wagons? Do they need extraction districts? We need staff. Mysterious symbol, the captain's legacy. One of our frostbreaking crew uncovered the frozen remains of a man in a tattered uniform. His shoulder patch reads New London Scouts, 3rd Platoon, and he bears an obscure insignia. Some of our elders claim it belongs to a military organization, while others argue it has a religious significance. Maybe you've heard of this New London before and can settle their debate. It symbolizes order or faith, or I don't recognize the symbol. Order and faith were the two talent trees in the last game. You could set laws. And order laws were, they used like an, an authoritative force, like a police force to keep the citizens of New London in line. Faith was more religious. You'd set up churches and your, um, your clergy would help to keep the, the citizens of New London in line. So I guess here we just are kind of choosing, I don't know if this affects the storyline at all, but we're just choosing between order and faith. And I tended to go faith because there was a specific talent in the faith tree or law in the faith tree that would completely eliminate one of the negative stats from like devotion could drop. And once you hit that particular stat, devotion was always maxed out. Your, your citizens basically worshipped you as they would a god. And your devotion never moved. It made the game a lot easier, in fact. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not religious in life. Um, so I don't really know whether I would want to go order or faith. But let's go. This will create a continuity in which New London has embraced order to survive or faith to survive. We'll go faith and we'll see what happens. Neat. This, since this is empty, what can I do with it? Deactivated, no access to resource depot. I can demolish it and I get some resources back. And I will do that, yes. I think I need to frost break around this a little bit more. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay. How do they feel about me? Neutral. That's fine. I'll take neutral when the alternative is bad. I wonder if I can turn off Titan belts when we have enough food. Let them eat a little more. 
30 weeks. Stockpiles will be ready in 35 weeks at current state, okay? We'll have to hasten. People in the camp are getting tense. They worry we, they worry we won't gather enough food in time. Our hunter blames us for ignoring the seal colony and claim they would have been able to provide enough food for everyone. It's too late for that now. Says who? Many elders have volunteered to walk into the Frostland rather than be a burden on our resources. Their sacrifice would significantly reduce the rations we need for the Whiteout. What should we do? The Whiteout will arrive in 30 weeks. As I just mentioned here, it says we have 35, 35 weeks until we have the food that we need. Slaughter the seals we can't do yet. Let our elders go. I'm not doing, or don't resort to extremes. What now? The endless cold and ice take a heavy toll on our structures. Steel, bro steel grows brittle and cracks. Wood deforms and splits. Winds batter our camp. We need a steady supply of materials to maintain our infrastructure. Steep them in squalor long enough, and our buildings will break at the least opportune moment, as they did just now. One of our districts has been damaged by the elements due to a lack of materials to maintain it. We have to repair the district to use it again. I see. What district? This one. Lack of prefabs. We don't have enough prefabricated components, making further construction impossible. There may be some prefab prefabs left in one of the construction wagons. If not, we can try to salvage prefabs by demolishing one of the existing districts or hubs. Obtain more prefabs by building an extraction district. Yep, I'm working on those. I've got two extraction districts coming in up here. Woof. Our stores are almost full of food, but we still need more for the whiteout. We need secure depots that can house our rations during the months of the whiteout. Build food stockpile hubs to increase the stockpile capacity of food. What? Okay. Good work. We're now gathering enough materials to maintain our districts. Time to focus on stockpiling food. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oof. Heat scarcity. Do I need to build another extraction district on some oil for heat? Because I can in a minute, maybe. Why can't I frost break? Requires 52 more workforce. I'm in a bind, I think. Well, once they're done building the food hub, I can maybe... Hmm. Is it going to warm up anytime soon? I can set the generator to overdrive, but if I'm not careful, it could break or explode. I actually don't remember what happens if overdrive gets to 100% in the first game. Maximum wear will cause malfunction and result in casualties. Yeah, it kind of like breaks and explodes. All right, noted.
I still can't frost break because I don't have the staff do it. I need to hurry up on food. Okay, so next time I've learned a couple lessons. Move your frost breakers to stuffed points of interest fast, way faster than I did. Like I spent a lot of time frost breaking this whole section and I didn't necessarily need to do that. It helps to have big clumps together for housing, but I also need to just be moving to points of interest faster and setting up extraction districts and food districts. I'm still kind of learning how to do stuff. Like, how do I order emergency shifts? Did the game tell me that? How's my generator doing? Oh, we've got lots of time, I think. I'm gonna... I don't know that this is going to allow me to make... No, it's not. What if I turn this one off? No, it's not. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to see this to the end, but it looks like we're not going to make it through this first whiteout. There's a lot that I've learned, though, about this game just in this first playthrough and that I can take with me into the next one, and that's a good thing. Is that a thing? No, it is not. There are three things that we can't set up on for like just because we don't have the resources to set up on them or the staff. So we'll have to figure that out in the next game. But like I said, for, for me, frost breaking is going to happen real fast. It's going to go right to points of interest in little hubs around it. So like I need three spots for each extraction or food district. So I'll make sure that I have that, but like mostly I'm just going to carve straight paths to everything instead of doing what I did here and doing all of this. That was a waste of time. Now I know. And there's still some stuff I need to figure out. Like, I don't know how to set emergency shifts. Oh, like that. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna set emergency shifts on all three of our food. We'll have to build another food stockpile hub if we can. 
we can't. We need more prefabs. We're getting materials from these. What's the difference between materials and prefabs? I do not know. With our food hub full... We're kind of doomed. Can I... if I... double up shifts... What? Yeah, they don't trust me anymore. They can only be pushed so far before the community breaks down. If you don't address this, even under the danger of the whiteout, you will be exiled. The rulers of the wanderers are the rules of the wanderers are as harsh as the frostland itself. You'll have 15 weeks to increase trust. So, knowing that I'm getting materials from this and not necessarily prefabs, I think I can turn the emergency shifts off over here. need them to tolerate me. Is there an easy way to see my trust level? So I still can't make anything. I am still not stockpiling food because I can't make a stockpile hub and I'm not making a stockpile hub because I don't have 80 prefabs. And I don't have 80 prefabs because I need to get a construction wagon going over here and I don't have one. So if I turn these off, say, then what? Can I? No. I have scraps. Can I give them scraps? Will they trust me more? There we go. Cool. I have a bunch of staff, so I'd really like to be able to... Make some stuff, so I'll have to get the construction wagons going faster. I'll make sure I have... What? Two oil, two food, two construction. It may not need maintenance as quickly. Look at, I have, I still have a bunch of scraps. I could feed them again if I want to. But until I can put in another hub, I'm stuck. The whiteout is in less than a week, and we're definitely not making it through. So we'll end the episode after the whiteout and after I get kicked out, in theory, and then we'll try again next time. The whiteout is here. The preparations are over. Yes. Chaos and starvation, the wanderers end. 
When the whiteout hit the camp, the wanderers were forced to take shelter within the broken dreadnought. They huddled together while howling winds buffeted the rest the rusted hull. As the storm continued, it became clear that there was not enough food. Some sacrificed themselves to give their share to their families. Others tried to control the stockpile through violence. The conflict escalated and fires broke out within the dreadnought, spoiling the precious supply. The few remaining survivors who had merged from the dreadnought soon splintered and disappeared into the frostland. The wanderers did not survive. Perhaps in another life. Okay. And that's that. That is our first failure in this game. Uh, next time you and I hang out, we'll try this again. I have learned, like I said, I've learned a lot. I know a little bit more about how I want to approach this. So we'll make sure that we get that going and uh, hopefully do a little better. I think I am going to stick with civilian difficulty level for now. Um, the game said maybe start there and work your way up. It did say that like if you played the first game, you should be fine at like a higher difficulty. But I don't think I am. Um, so we'll see. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think and have an amazing day.